What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we are discussing our picks for the Game of the, uh, Game of the Year awards that were just announced recently from uh, the Game Awards account on, on Twitter and, uh, and on live stream. And so, you know, it's actually a very interesting time of the year because of the fact that we're getting at the, I guess you would say the holiday season, and that's where all the awards, all the award ceremonies and basically all the awards are getting dished out. And obviously, I need to have the crew along with me. So along to my left is Haki. What's up, guys? And to my right is Langella Kill. What's up, everybody? So recently, like I said, guys, we we had seen the official nominations for this year's categories for the uh, Game of the Year awards, and basically they had uh, these these awards were selected by a hundred plus critics from all across the gaming media. And when they compiled all of them together, they they basically voted for the top six for almost every category, and then those top six were then put to the top. And that's how they kind of finalize who is going to be up for grabs for these different awards. On December 9th, we're going to get the official Game Awards, and it's going to be live streamed. And, and I think we're, I, I would hope that we get to live stream it as well and kind of have our own opinions about what we see here. Um, but at the end of the day, we're going to obviously have some coverage on what we think um, on the general over, uh, you know, just the general reactions, what we found. So I think when you look at all the total number of categories, there are 32. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to discuss all 32 today, but I think we're going to break down the biggest and probably the most popular of all the categories and then kind of give our opinions about what we think for each one. So let's just jump right into it. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to announce the category and give kind of the basic uh, concept of what it entails. So let's get started first with best game direction. So this, this is awarded for Outstanding Career Division and innovation in game direction and design. So the nominees for game direction are Elden Ring, from that's from software, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Immortality, which is by Half Mermaid, and Stray. So, so when you're looking at these awards, I mean, this there's sometimes there's categories that kind of mix into two at the same time. I'll tell you which ones I'm thinking of that, but. When I'm looking at these nominees, and uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll jump to hockey first. I have a feeling I know which one you're going to pick for this one because uh, it's just you play it way yeah. too often. But what do you think is going to win the uh, the best game direction for for this for this year? Real quick though, before we dive in, are, are we saying who we think is going to win or who we feel should? Well, win? how about this? We you, why don't you get both? I would say give me who you first who you want to win and who you think is going to win afterwards. So hockey, go ahead. What do you? Who who do you think is going to win first, and who do you want to win? Um, I mean, I so I have. I think it's. I think it's going to be between three. But I think one um, that creative vision. I think Stray might actually have a chance because that's like a, it was definitely a cool concept. The gameplay seemed pretty cool. Um, and then the other two are between God of War and, and Elden Ring. But I I want Elden Ring to to win. Um, Elden Ring for me was was like a game changing um uh game so uh, i'm thinking i'm thinking elden ring is gonna win but i think stray could steal it um it was a very very different game yeah i could i could see that uh Langella kill who do you think is gonna win and who do you who do you want to win i think it's gonna be a night of a lot of elden ring and god of war um they're the two most nominated games um out of the group for all these awards and i think they're gonna win a bunch of them um so you're going to see these two go at it. It's it's. I do think that they had pretty much the right nominees, although I'm not very familiar with Immortality. Um, but I think Elden Ring is going to win this, and I think it. I think that's who deserves to win it the most. Although I think it could go either way between them and God of War, but I think Elden Ring is going to be the winner. You know, I'm actually kind of. Uh, I, I my opinion. I think. I think Stray will win because of like Hockey said. The design of the game is very is intriguing. I mean, granted, um, I know I was one of the people that was like, "Yeah, Stray is not going to be great because you're playing just yeah, as a cat, or whatever." I know we I were all kind of on the board, the same thing as well. But I played it and I thought it was pretty cool for what it was. It was a puzzle game basically, and the look of the game looks great. Uh, it's a it's a small time game, but when you just play it, you're like, "Wow, this looks really really cool." And the design of it is actually interesting. So I think Stray will win because of it's the it's just interesting and different um i want elden ring to win because i feel like when you look at the world of elden ring there's so much different 
components and art design that goes into it. And it's just very different. Um, I know probably some people would say, you know, maybe you're sounding like a homer. Why not a, you know, why not a bigger game like Horizon Forbidden West or God of War? I think God of War, as much as it's really good, the, the I guess you would say that the, the, the uh, creative vision, it's not necessarily too off from the 2018 yeah. uh, game. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that far off. Like, so it's not really like it's creating something brand new. Elden Ring is like different. Right, it's a completely different world. It, yeah, you might get the feeling of Dark Souls, but like it's not, it's not the world of Dark Souls. It's completely over the top and, and outrageous. Horizon Forbidden West would have been another option, but it's same the same thing. You're basically playing in the same place as you were. As, yeah, I know it's a different area, but you're playing in almost the same look-alike world that you were in the first game. Stray is just different. Stray is like the cyberpunk that we all kind of wanted, but it's a, it's a, it's a they're a cat. You're not, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not a mercenary, but that's, it's like, it looks like cyberpunk, but it's not. Um, let's jump to the, uh, to the next one. I think when we look at the next game, it's best multiplayer. And this is for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, uh, in, irrespective of game genre or platform. So it doesn't matter what game platform it is. It could be any of them. As long as a component has multiplayer components to it. Let me just tell you the the nominees here are are very interesting. You have Call of Duty: Modern Warfare 2, Multiverse, Overwatch 2, Splatoon 3, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. Uh, Legella Kill, I'll let you go first. Who do you think is uh, going to win? Who you think who you think should win? Who's going to win is going to be Call of Duty, <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't want them to win because. You know, you shouldn't win these big awards for for putting out, you know, average, average stuff. Um, what does help Call of Duty is that you could look at these nominees and and there's not a lot of game breakers here. Um, so even if they win, I can't say that another game got completely snubbed, right? There's just not a lot of competition. I think Call of Duty does win. I would like for Splatoon to win. Um, that's who I hope would win, but. To be fair and to be completely honest, even though I have some disdain for the makers of Call of Duty, um, Splatoon just, they also lacked at times content. So um, I can't be fully, if we're being very honest with each other, I think Call of Duty is going to win. I would like Splatoon to win. Um, I know there's a strong Overwatch fan base, um, but they didn't provide enough content either to be deserving. And Multiverse, you know, Multiverse, I do think had a unique... Um, entrance into the but it just didn't last long enough and i for them to pull off an upset against call of duty or overwatch you know it needed to it needed to last longer than it did um so i think call of duty wins but i would like splatoon to win yeah uh so hockey what do you think do you, do you who do you think is going to win and who do you want to see win yes yeah, so i think i'm on the same boat uh with uh, langelica i think call of duty is going to win it's such a big name they're the ones that actually did come out with content and a lot of it even though uh as langella said it was kind of mediocre um even the warzone aspect warzone just came out it's good but it also can be bad um oh I've, i'm a huge fan of overwatch i've uninstalled the game two times already <laughs> it didn't come out correctly um i'm gonna get back on it once season two comes out once they start patching things um I mean, I would like Overwatch to, to take it over Call of Duty if I had to. I did like Splatoon. Um, I just did. I maybe I just didn't play it enough. Um, I don't think it came up with a ton of content, but it was a very cool and, and unique game. I, I didn't play any Splatoon before that, so uh, Splatoon three was was my first Splatoon, and it was fun. Um, I, I got a question for Aki. Who do you think deserves it more, Call of Duty or Overwatch? Best multiplayer. Yeah, if it was between those two, who do you think deserves? I'm going to say Overwatch because they the five v five. Whether some people believe it or not, the five v five did change the aspect of the game. Um, so it's not just shooting at shields forever now. Now it's like, all right, if one person dies, now it's really now it can really be a toss up of, of what ultimate to use and stuff like that. So I think Overwatch, Call of Duty, I feel like puts out the same game every single year. Um, this is obviously better than Caldera, but I think Overwatch deserves, if we're looking strictly off of multiplayer play, I like I like Overwatch for that. Yeah, you see, when I'm looking at this uh, category, sometimes I, I can tell the critic bias a lot of times, and 
Call of Duty, Activision, and Blizzard essentially can buy critics to say, yes, their game is the best. And critically, this Call of Duty, granted, it was better than Vanguard, but it's like you're, you're comparing dumpster trash to, to stinky garbage, and you're like, it's just... Yeah, you know, I I'm, I do agree. I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is probably going to win. Um, but there are multiple games on this list I think would be better off winning. Um, I think, uh, and I agree with Angelic Hill, Multiverse is the probably the closest we've seen to any game even compared to Smash Bros. in the type of genre and what it's about. Two games on this, on this list are the only ones that have co-op play. Right, co-op. When they say co-op, it means playing with somebody else on the same console. There's only two of the of the five that actually have the ability to do that, and that's Multiverse and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, right? So you you have a component of this this award that only two of the five can do. The other one, yeah, Call of Duty has has Spec Ops, but like, dude, it half it doesn't work half the time, right? Overwatch doesn't have split screen, and Splatoon doesn't have split screen. But I think what I'm looking at general success, I hope Splatoon wins because I think Splatoon actually has a good amount of stuff to do. It just, I think they have to adapt some of the like the game modes a yeah, little bit better. I hated the, I hated the time. Yeah, the uh, shortness, match, the shortness of the time matches, and and like there, there's a uh, a medium that you. I like that they, hey, they don't want to have these 15, 20 minute matches that sometimes these I multiplayer that. things I happen. That, I get yeah. that, but man, going so short, it just you you don't do enough in a match at times, and the yeah. match is already over. So that to me hurts Splatoon the experience I had with Splatoon. Or yeah. you feel like you're doing a lot, and the, the, the game ends, and it pulls up your map, and it doesn't look like a lot's been done, you know? Yeah, yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel like it ends you know? too early for you to really do anything, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah you know what, you, let's just say a, a two of the, ha let's say half your team gets wiped, it feels like you have no chance to come back and no, make yeah. a big push, you know what I mean? Like, that's, a, that's the issue of three-minute matches. You gotta, like, and maybe it's because it's social, and they, they're gonna make adjustments to make it more ranked, to get more time, like, whatever it may be, but they need to do something. And I think that's what I like Splatoon because the mode was fun. When we played it on stream, we had we had fun playing that game. You know what yeah. I mean? We we enjoyed it. COD sometimes makes you feel like you want to put your head through a wall. And 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 so, you know, yeah, I play a lot of COD too, but at the same time, it's like Splatoon, I had less anger playing COD. I mean less anger playing Splatoon than I did with COD because the game feels more like I guess more social. Like it COD doesn't feel like a social game. It feels more like it's a sweaty game. Because of the skill-based matchmaking that we're playing. You know what I mean? That's that's the issue that COD has. But you should not be like that. And that's when games used to be more fun. Um, let's move on, though. This is actually really good. A lot of people like this. And I actually made a whole video about this. But best adaption. So this is recognizing outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a, a video game to another entertainment medium. I made an entire video about bashing how horrid people are adapting video games to media and this year probably had the best collection of adaptions to media i think i've ever seen before i think they've done the best because you look at this list arcane league of legend right this is a a lot of people love arcane it's it's been well loved cyberpunk edge runners which i watched entirely great adaption to the to the games i thought you could tell how good it was because of how many people jump back into cyberpunk because of the Edge Runners update. You have Cuphead Show, which I did a whole video breakdown of that one as well, saying, hey, they did a great job of comparing it. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which had a lot of success in the theaters, and then Uncharted, which I think is the odd, odd person out on this one. But of the, four, of the five of these, four of them were all great, right? I think the fifth one, Uncharted, has mixed reviews. You have some people liked it, some people really yeah. didn't like it. So it's like, of the five of them, you know, I want to get your guys' opinion I know, like some of us haven't seen all of them, so it's hard to make the you know, vote here. But hockey, I want to get your opinion first. Which one do you think is uh, is going to win? Where, which where's one Paramount think? Plus on this? Yeah, where's the Halo show? I'm I'm wondering. I do see Sonic like the Hedgehog too. They had Paramount Pictures. Yeah, so Paramount, Paramount Pictures was like paid like twenty bucks to like the set one day, and that's why they got their name on the side of it. Um, uh, so hockey. <laughs> <laughs> if Halo was there, would have won. But uh, so hockey, yeah. well, it was, without it than Halo. Yeah, well, what's no, the best cool. show? What's the best um, show? I'm gonna go with Sonic the Hedgehog too. Um, I thought it was uh, I thought it was real cool. Um, that's really the only one that I 
actually watched, but um, I know a few of the other ones. Uncharted, like you said, kind of did have uh, mixed reviews, but I remember you telling me about the Cyberpunk show and how like crazy it was, so I'm definitely going to take a look at that, but I think Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one and the second one were really good. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really do agree that Sonic Hedgehog has done you know very good job for a gaming movie that a lot of people struggle or scared of when they first saw Sonic. Angelica, yeah. what do you think here? <laughs> yeah, what do you think? You man? know what? And, and I know, like you said, the Uncharted was mixed review, and that probably is the fifth best out of the five on this list. Um, but this is actually a pretty darn good list, um, and it, it gives you some faith about making kind of those um you know transitions from games into either shows or movies um obviously it, it drowns out the disappointment of the halo show and even the news about the witcher with uh you know changing main characters uh changing Geralt, where, where people just do stupid stuff and ruin potentially great shows mm -hmm. um, now obviously the witcher is still you know we'll see where that goes but to me, looking at this list, I think Arcane is going to win. And I do think, you know, if Arcane or Cyberpunk were to win, even Sonic the, the Hedgehog, I don't think, you know, it would be a, a huge shocker if any of those three win. But I do think Arcane wins. And I think that they are probably the most deserving. I, I think Ar Arcane um, has gotten such high praise and, and people really love the Arcane show. Um, yeah. It's also done really well critically. Um, I think Arcane is going to win. I see. I'm looking at the, la the 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 battle right now is, and I agree. I think Arcane or Cyberpunk, because I mean Sonic the Hedgehog did well. I think, and I did my um, I think I did my breakdown of it. I said that Sonic literally was one of the top with three that had gotten over the meta, the not only Metacritic score but IMDb as well as the Rotten Tomatoes got over like an 80. Right? That you know, what I mean, like that. Very rarely do you see that in movies, but. I, I don't think Sonic the Hedgehog is going to win here. I think it's going to be either between Arcane. I think, I think in my opinion, what I want to see and what will happen, I think will be Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I think that one literally, you could see the success by not only the Rotten Tomato score being literally a 99, basically. It was the closest thing to being a 100 on Rotten Tomatoes, which is just outrageous to see that happen. And on top of that, Cyberpunk was downright dead. And literally the show got people to be interested in it again and the update went with with the show basically all it did was it added some guns and clothing and and things like that to the to the game and all of a sudden people were like yo i gotta go back and recreate some of these characters and put them in the show and get their weapons and stuff and literally people that game's freaking been bought back like it's it's now it has population again because of the show like you know i think obviously the the success of league of legends gets people to be on arcane but cyberpunk literally was dead like it was a horrible launch like the one of the worst launches in history and then they come out with a anime and now people are like i actually want to go play and play try it again and, and see how it is like usually it's the other way around when a game does well people go watch the show it's like the show did well people going back to the game it's it's kind of outrageous but yeah i think i think uh i think cyberpunk edgerow is gonna win this one let's go to the next one best action adventure this so this is for the best action adventure game combining combat with traversal and Puzzle, uh, pu puzzle solving. This is an interesting list. We have a Plague's Tale Requiem. Uh, this is a newer game. A lot of people really like the way this is. It's, it's actually on the list of the game of the year as well. We'll talk about it later on. God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Tunic. Um, so we have some big, big names added to this list. The puzzle games and, and, and things like that. So I kind of want to get your opinions uh, let's go with Angelica here first. Which game do you think will win and which one do you do you favor here to win? Yeah, so, you know, when you call about best action adventure, right? So to me, when I best action adventure, you need to com combine the action and the, you know, puzzle solving, right? Yep. So to me, Tunic and Stray, very strong puzzle games, but they lack the action aspect that I would think in the best action adventure game. And a Plague's Tale has a better mix of that, um, but it's not as strong as God of War and, and Horizon Forbidden West. I think th those are the top two, and I do think God of War wins, and I think deservingly wins. Um, again, Horizon Forbidden West keeps running into the issue of coming out at the same time as other <laughs> really elite games. So previously, they came out with Legend of Zelda, uh, Breath of the Wild, um, and Mario Odyssey, and this time around, they're coming out with Elden Ring and God of War. So, unfortunately, for Horizon Forbidden West, deserves to be in this list. But 
it just doesn't reach the same level as God of War, and I think God of War wins it. Yeah, so Haki, what do you think here? Yeah, I'm going to uh, piggyback off of Angela. I, I think God of War is the one that wins it, and I'd like to see it win it too. I mean, um, I'm about to start playing the first one. Uh, Marsman was cool enough to let me borrow the PS4, so I'm going to be getting into the, the good story mode games. Um, but just watching your, your streams on Twitch, I mean, the the action and the adventure fighting the bosses and, and everything was, was really cool. So I'm thinking they're going to sweep that. Uh, I think they're going to sweep that question easy. God of War is going to win that. Yeah, I think uh, I'm looking at, I think God of War will win. I, I To be honest, it has great action, has great traversal. And uh, I, there are some good puzzles in it too that you have to kind of manage and everything. So I think they do a good combination of, of all of these. So I do believe it's going to be God of War. The next one is just best action. And this one's just the pure combat just what's going on in the game how outrageous can it be how efficient can it be all that stuff so the the nominees are bayonetta 3 cod Mon warfare 2 neon white sifu and teenage mutant ninja turtles shredders revenge hockey which one do you think is gonna win i mean i'm gonna go with cod i mean the action is good you know a lot of gun battles with your own war zone or multiplayer i mean it is extremely sweaty uh <laughs> but it always has been uh, but yeah, my action, it's going to go out of that list. It's going to go to Call of Duty. Uh, Angelica, what do you think here? I think there's going to be an upset in this one. I'm going to go with Bayonet 3. Um, you know, not a lot of people talk about Bayonet. It's actually pretty um, highly acclaimed critically. Um, and I do think this could be one for the upset. So um, it's going to be Bayonet 3. Um, and I think if they did win, I think they would be deserving. I know it would probably surprise and shock a lot of people, but it wouldn't shock me. And so I'm going to go Bayonet 3. Yeah, I think I'm going to agree. I think Bayonetta is uh, is a great combat game. If anyone's ever played it before, it's just it's kind of reminds you of like Devil May Cry, kind of yeah. like a lot the way the gameplay is. And I think that's always outrageous. It kind of be, can be as crazy as you want it to be. It's kind of similar to like the old God of War games in a way. So I think that that can be a really good. Um, I think it's going to win. I think that's just as simple as it is. I think COD is probably the runner up, if anything. Um, if COD wins best action, like, come on now. Like, it's, it's, it's I mean, I granted, it's, it's, it's fine. It's a COD game, but like, Bayonetta 3 is, has a lot of cool mechanics to it. Let's go to the next one. Best narrative for this is for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. Uh, so let's, the nominees here are Plague's Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, and Immortality Hockey. I'll let you pick first. Who do you think is going to win? Um, I think, and I'd like Elden Ring to win. Uh, to win. Um, they got a cool story, even though you have to kind of dig really deep or look it up or speak to someone that might know a little bit more uh, to get the story. It is a pretty wild story, um, and it does have a lot of open doors for the story to continue, which is awesome. So um, I'm going to go Elden Ring. I know um, God of War is going to be right up there as well, so um, my vote is going to go to Elden Ring now. Angelica, what do you think? Listen, I love me some Elden Ring, um, but I actually don't think they're in the top three in this category. Um, I actually think that God of War is going to win. Um, and if I'm being, if I'm going to list my top four, um, I think God of War and Horizon Forbidden West are the top two, followed by Plague's Tale. And I think Elden Ring is four. Not that it doesn't have a great story. I think it has a great story, but for outstanding storytelling, um, it doesn't do a great job of doing that for the for the player you really have to dive into the lore mm -hmm. um and that's by looking at the materials that you pick up and the bosses that you beat to kind of get a grasp um of the story and, and, and that is a from software um that's what they do right so it's it's not that they're changing their identity and they you know made a wrong decision that's their style but if i'm going with best narrative driven um i would actually put elden ring at four and i think god of war wins but horizon forbidden west has a good story as well and so does the Plague Tale, but does it reach the level of God of War? I don't think it does. I think God of War wins. Yeah, see, like, I think the big thing is I'm going to say God of War as well because of the fact that it does a better job just telling you the story straight out. And it also gives you like a background. It yeah. references stuff from the last game. And now, granted, Elder Ring is the first of its, I guess you would say, of that yeah. title. But at the end of the day, I do agree. Like That was one of the flaws that game has is that it's difficult. You have to kind of follow based on reading things or looking up things like, and I think that's the issue I see from Elden Ring. God of War is straight up to the point. It tells you the story and makes you like, you know, everything happens within that game. And it's what it, 
all the all the dialogue and everything. I think I'd even go with a Plague Tale before I'd say, uh, you know, I think Plague Tale. I'll probably go Elden Ring next and then Horizon because Horizon I think struggles with the the slowness of storytelling in that game. I think that the problem that they have is a lot of talking. Like we need to get more develop more stuff occurring. Yeah, talking. but that's narrative development. Yeah, but is it narrative development to me talking to the soup maker for like twenty minutes? Like that is that that is that, is that development of a narrative? I mean, yeah, I, well, it's I, a better story than Plague's Tale. No, Plague's Tale, but Plague's Tale is more narrow. It's more like focused on specifically you're doing this and then you're doing this, you're doing this. Like that's why God of War works well for that because you know it's not an open world. Like granted, yeah, you can go traverse in an area, but like it's it's, it's one narrow area. It's a line. You're going in the line and you're continually along the line and then you go to the next area, another line. And every story plot is the same way. There's no obviously options or choices, but like it's fine. That's how old games used to be anyway. You just went down a line and story. Um, Plague's Tale is the same way. I think Horizon, I think's problem is that they kind of it's like it's like Assassin's Creed Odyssey in a way in storytelling, which is too much stuff makes it makes it not as enjoyable. Now Horizon's a great game, but they just add too much things, and it uh, just doesn't land as well as some others. Um, that's just my my opinion, though. Uh, next one's best ongoing game. So this is obviously outstanding development of an ongoing content involves around play, player experience over time. Uh, Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Angelica, which one do you think is going to win? This one's a hard one. Um, I think this is actually one of the more interesting ones. Um, I think Final Fantasy... 14 or apex legend i think it's gonna be between those two um and i will if i have to choose one i will go with final fantasy 14 i would like i think it would be really great for the studio for destiny 2 to win and you know they started off struggling um but they've developed content over a period of time that really helped boost their population um to especially uh pretty high respectable levels especially on the uh, Sony consoles. So um, I would like to see for, you know, for Bungie to kind of, you know, get some, you know, they bring in money, but like to really get Destiny in the right, you know, direction going forward and and beyond, I would like to see them win, but I don't think they're going to make the top, you know, the top two. And I think Final Fantasy or Apex Legends is going to win. Yeah. So hockey, what do you think here? Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna vote for uh, Apex. Um, I think Apex started off as a good game, and it's continued to be a good game. They've had a lot of content. Um, I think Fortnite. I, I think Fortnite still has such a big following that yeah, it, it really could win because I mean they have added and taken away building and added so much stuff in the last year or two. I mean I think they have a real big chance, but um, I'm gonna vote for Apex. Yeah, I think when I'm looking at this, I'm actually going to go with Fortnite. I think Fortnite did something that I never thought was possible. They took out their building, and the game got even more population than before. And they took a gamble, and they wanted to see how people liked it, and people loved it. And so they just said, okay, we, people like this stuff. Let's let's make a mode just for it. And then they did the same. They, they, they like kept adding and doing things, and obviously they continually add characters, like FM animes and people and like all these all this stuff constantly. And I feel like Population just keeps going up for that game. I think the other game I was going to pick was Destiny 2 because they do actually do a good job at making some DLC content like that is pretty good. I mean, Apex, yeah. the reason why I, I put it down was because their season content for this year kind of fell down a little bit. And based on a lot of people have been said that their, their deal, that their season was not some of the seasons they had were just not the best recently. So that's the only reason why it kind of dropped on the list for me. But I think Fortnite's going to win this one. Next one I want to jump into is best art design. And this one uh, is basically seeing how creative or technical achievement of the artistic design and animation. I want to go first in this one. I'm going to go with Stray. I think that Stray's art design is honestly very impressive for a game that I straight up thought this was going to be a dud, um, a cat game. And they, the art design, the look of everything, the map and and just the, just the look is, is great. The other runner up for me was horizon forbidden west i think the game looked phenomenal i just think that um stray i think nailed it out of the park with its city atmosphere and i think that's what got people really hyped about it it was like a cyberpunk but with cats um but uh hockey which one do you think is the best art design here um i'm gonna go with elden ring um 
from the open world to the mini bosses, but really the the world bosses and like the the demigods and stuff like that. The cinematics um, when you were gonna face the boss or when you got the sec when you got the boss into the uh, its second phase, um, I thought it was awesome. Um, I mean, it really just changed my my thinking about games in general. So, Elden Ring was a big uh, inspiration for uh, for this year. So, I'm going to go best art goes to Elden Ring. Well, Joe Kill, what do you think? I agree with Mars, man. I think Horizon Forbidden West and Stray, um, they really did a tremendous job art design wise and, and kind of emulse you in their world. Elden Ring is another really strong one. Um, I know God of War obviously looks good and Scorn, um, very gruesome looking, but. You know, their art design is intriguing, but I, I think Stray actually is going to win this one as well. Um, and Horizon Forbidden West, if they were to win, it would not surprise me, but I think those are the top two. Yeah, let's keep this going. We only have like three left. There's there's so many, but I'm only going to pick three more. The best score in music. This is the basically the best music in the games, and uh, this was a definitely a uh, tough one. I'm narrowing it down between between it's Sukasa. The toe from Elden Ring or Bear McCary from God of War. I'm narrowing it down between the two of them. This has been a battle. I think I'm going to go with uh, with Sato from Elden Ring because some of those boss battles that you <laughs> face off against people, the music just gets you even more intense. But I'd say the same thing about God of War. Yeah. Some of the tunes that they drop in the game when you're fighting bosses and just in levels is pretty nice. But I think yeah. Elden Ring has the more epic soundtrack. It literally has like the chorus with like some jamming ass bands in there. And I'm just like, dude, I am literally entrenched in this battle. Like to the point where like the, one of the battles, uh, obviously, uh, oh God, it just escapes my name. One of the most intense battles I've ever faced in any video game. It was, uh, you know, just in, just in, just expanded because of the music that was in the background and there are several. Of them. So I think that's kind of my pick. I think, I think the Elder ring music was fantastic. Hockey. What do you think here? Which one's going to be the winner? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Chad's going to be able to, you guys are going to be able to guess my game of the year, but um, I'm going to go Elden Ring with this one too, man. I mean, like you were saying, there's some serious um, opera singers at, at some of these bosses like Nickel and the last boss of the game. There's just some serious, serious music. It gets you hyped. Sometimes it gets you scared, you know, if you're playing at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go for Elden Ring here. Angelica, what do you think? I agree. Elden Ring, without question. Um, although God of War does get you emulsed in kind of that northern god atmosphere, but man, Elden Ring had some absolute bangers fighting some of these bosses, and it really uh, emulses you in kind of like this, these huge moments. And even the different kind of styles of music when you go to different lands, um, I also really liked Elden Ring. They just did such a tremendous job um, with the music. I think they deserve it. Yeah, and uh, we need to now talk about the game of the year. Obviously, this is the game that encompasses all the components that we've talked about, which is the best of the best. And so the nominees here are the Plague's Tale, a Plague's Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Just to give everyone a heads up, I picked five of the six in my own, in my own Discord, so I got to pat myself on the shoulder here because I... I, I kind of called it um, based on the games that I played as well as just the games I saw and said had success. So, Haki, which is you think will win game of the year for this year? Yes, I'm going to go um, what I, who I hope is going to win, and I'll tell you who I think is going to win. I'm going to go with my hopes is that Elden Ring won. Um, like I said before, that game um, pretty much changed my entire uh, outlook on gaming in general. So, um, always been a shooter and you know you guys told me to pick up what is this an rpg or something like that right or yep that's yep. what it is so you guys told me to do it the only reason why i did do it is because it was multiplayer first couple of days you couldn't join up but then uh i didn't even need to join up you know it was it was real cool just playing on my own and and, and going through the whole game and then when we were able to join up multiplayer made it a lot uh cooler to face the bosses so um yeah it changed my whole entire outlook so i'm hoping they win i think the only game that's going to give them a run for the uh, run for their money is going to be uh, Ragnarok. So God of War. Yeah. Uh, the other games were very cool. They could have been big enough to to do some damage, but I think God of War, just because the first one did so well, this one plays like that one, a little yeah. bit different of a story or a continuation of the story. I think it could probably. It. I think God of War is most likely going to win. I want Elden Ring too. 
Yeah, I think Elden Ring has a chance, though. Well, Angelico, who do you think is going to win? Who do you want to win? I think Elden Ring has a real chance to win this. And, and like, I'll just say this. God of War, uh, without question, I think a winner outside of Elden Ring or God of War would be the most shocking. And I think those two deserve it more than any of the other ones on this list. The other ones are good games, but they're a tier below um, those two games. And God of War... Um, if Elden Ring didn't come out, God of War would pretty much walk away with this and vice versa, because God of War is a very strong game, really good characters. They do emulsify you in those in, in that environment. But to me, I think Elden Ring is a top 10 open world game of all time. Um, I think it's into the top 10. They've done such a great job of creating a large scale uh, map for you and that it has different environments. And there's never been well i don't play a lot of games where at times i have done before but like you want to put your fist through a wall and jump out a window and then at times feel so accomplished and so like happy on what you just did like that's what the elden ring the experience of elden ring is and a lot of from software games are like but elden ring has done such a good job where you can enjoy it playing by yourself but also i'm a big uh i'm a big person in playing with friends and family in a multiplayer aspect and that especially when patches came in and helped made that a better experience. I had such a great time playing with the Mars man crew in that game. And you know, that's to me, it's not a knock on God of War cause I'm a huge story game guy. So I'm not knocking God of War, but that to me is bonus points for Elden ring. And I think Elden ring is going to pull it off in the end. That's who I want to win. But if God of War wins, it's not like I, I think Elden ring got shafted. Um, but I do think Elden Ring will win. Um, it might surprise people, but I think they win, but it could go either way. I think Elden Ring wins. Yeah, see, when I'm looking at this, uh, I think the, we all kind of narrow it down to two games, Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok, I think with the clear-cut final two. I think the question is going to be whether or not the critics are too caught up in, in, I guess, the excitement of a recent game because literally God yeah. of War came out the week before the deadline's over, right? Yeah. And, all, and yeah. even then, it was nominated for the most games most awards of the entire year. Like, you know, sometimes I feel like that is an issue that people have when they are critics and they're like, well, I just got to play this game. It's so, so great. So ex all this excitement brings them to be nominated for the most. Not saying it doesn't deserve it, but it's like, yeah, the, the excitement of a recent release has you more into it. Like, for example, Halo 5 came out at the very beginning. People were giving it like a nine out of 10. Like it was a top level game when we're looking at this game, like a 9.2. The game is not even near that because of the, the recent release, you know, like, but that I'm not saying that's what God of War is, but that might give them an advantage because it's recent and it is very successful. While Elden Ring came out in late February, early March, and it was a game that everybody was playing because of how good it was. And there was a time where there are no games out. So that yeah. was the only game that people were playing. And I think when I'm looking at both of these, I, I think that... I think God of War is going to win because of the recent excitement that everyone has with it. I think that there are some flaws to the game. Sorry, some flaws of the game because of the. Um, and well, I'll have I have a whole review of it that I'm in the in developments of right now. I think the only flaw in comparison to Elden Ring is the limitation on the combat and also exploration. I think people love customizing a character, doing whatever you want with the character, exploring combat, all that stuff. And the Elder Ring does it all. They have a story. The only downside is you got to research to really get the full full experience of it. I think it's a good story. It could be better if they did a better job explaining all the little components. I, I want. I really want Elden Ring to win because I think that is the best game of the year. I think it has more bang for your buck for what you're doing. And uh, I think we've all experienced 100 plus hours of playing Elden Ring like and we didn't feel like, oh, this is boring or this is bland or anything. We we literally, there's stuff that even Haki recently just turned on Elden Ring and was like, yeah, I didn't get to complete all the bosses. And he's got like, what, 100 plus hours on the game. There's, 200 plus hours. 200 plus hours. <laughs> on the game. And, and at the end of the day, that yeah. that is the point. There's so much stuff yeah. in that game that sometimes you play it, you beat it, and you're like, I still didn't do all the stuff. And that is something that a lot of people are don't understand when it comes to like Elden Ring. Like, I heard people say that it was a niche title. Like, what do you, 
what do you think niche it means? Niche means like it's standard that it's like it's only for a select audience of people that can play it. Like it's not like it, I think this game does probably more more inclusion than any other of the of, of the from software games. Like to be honest, yeah. and and I think that that's something that people have to understand when Dark Souls won Game of the Years before. Like from software games, Sekiro won Game of the Year. Like Sekiro, yeah. that game was extremely difficult, and there is no multiplayer component. Like. And you're telling me now you have a better version of Sekiro with multiplayer components and it's easier to play in general. How is that not, how is that a niche title? You know what I mean? And, and the difficulty turns people off. And I get that. Listen, I get that. I do get that. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, but man, I, I've had such, and people have made videos, content off of Elden Ring yep. um, that, that, you know, like you don't normally get. And mm -hmm. to me, again, this is not like knocking God of War because I no, think God it's of not, War yeah, dude, is an incredible. Is not, yeah. They've done an incredible job, and Kratos is probably one of the best developed characters. Um, again, we're talking about one of the best studios in Santa Monica Studios. But man, I think From Software really, with the hype that Elden Ring had coming into this, you know, they had a chance to really flop this thing. And to mm -hmm. me, they created an open world game that is one of the best. I get it, like. I, it's one of the best open world maps. I know people call it like greatest of all time. I'm, it, they had flaws too. Mm -hmm. They have absolute flaws. It's not the greatest of all time. And but man, there is so many positives from Elden Ring, um, and just the experience that you have with people. Um, man, I, I'm sorry. I, I think it, it it deserves Game of the Year, um, and I think it should win. I just think that God of War is is clearly the next best game. If if anything, like it's very close. I mean. Metacritic has Elden Ring at a 96 and God of War at 94. Like they're literally yeah. on the same level yeah. of of greatness. And it reminds me of a year when you had Odyssey and Breath of the Wild released in the same year, and they're both top level legendary games. But just just Legend of Zelda just just passed, it, right? And that's literally yeah. the difference. And that's literally what this is, right? It's the equivalent of that year in this in this year. And granted. The fact is you actually did end up getting solid games this year even though there's so many delays and all that stuff it actually was a good gaming yeah, year yeah, right and i think and and it's like every year we keep saying next year next year next year we finally got one and, and it only makes you excited because the next topic you know i mean i i kind of i kind of skipped over one of the one of the things but i want to ask what you think is the most anticipated game for next year in Final Fantasy 16, Hogwarts Legacy, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Starfield, or Legend of Zelda Tears, uh, or sorry, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm going to go with Legend of Zelda. I think, granted, yeah. I think, granted, Starfield is a game that I think everyone's eager to see, like, play and, and try it, because they, you know, they delayed it, and Phil Spencer came out and was like, you know, we, we dropped the ball, and this is kind of funny, they dropped the ball on Halo Infinite, releasing games early, Right, and so they realized we're not gonna do that again, and they basically said we're we're keeping Starfield in the oven to cook a little bit longer, and we're gonna see the benefits, and I think they will. I just think Legend of Zelda is literally a game I've been waiting to play for so long, and uh, since I first got the Switch, and I want to play it again. So I think that's my pick for most anticipated game. Angelica, I think you're on the same boat as me. I am, but I am gonna say this about Starfield. It feels like Starfield is starting to get that cyberpunk you know like anticipation right like when they told you what you could do possibly do in this game you know you you feel like wow like you know this is almost we're gonna be like star trek out you know yeah. you can travel away to different you planets and like there's a whole bunch of colonies that you can visit so like that aspect to me is super intriguing but i'm really interested to see where legend of zelda goes in its second you know kind of run at an open world game and we've seen like listen breath of the wild i know like you know outside of elden ring breath of the wild is the game i put the most hours in in a open world game and so you know you even saw from guy makers of elden ring and you know they took you know they, they were inspired by components of breath of the wild of other open world games and now they've raised the standard now for open world so what does legend of zelda do now um so to me that's extremely it, that is my number one Legend of Zelda, but Starfield is right behind it based on, you know, the the rumors and, and what they described. And even that little preview that they showed and talked about, it feels like, wow, you know, can this reach the kind of an upper echelon game um, is really intriguing. 
So, Aki, what do you think is the most anticipated game for you? Yes, yeah, so it's definitely a toss up between those two. I'm I'm still playing the Breath of the Wild, and I will be playing it more in a couple months. Um, that game is really it's got something really good. The movement, the story. I mean, um, I thought the most anticipated game was going to be Starfield until I found out that there was another Legend of Zelda. I, I think Legend of Zelda is going to take most anticipated game, but just like Angelic Hill said, I mean Starfield could be as good as cyberpunk would have been if cyberpunk was a perfect polished game like it mm-hmm. could be a game of the decade you know so i'm so glad that they pushed back the you know they delayed it i'm so glad i'm cool with playing the games i got right now i don't want a broken game just give me a full game make sure the content's there and the content works and that game could be amazing yeah well listen we are now jumping on to the mars man gaming awards and I want to give a shout out to some of these because there are there are some categories I wish they added to the Game Awards list. And I'll go over, I think I have two of them here for my nominees. And I think the first one we're going to talk about is the Scrooge Award. It has the, this is a award given to the worst game monetization practices of the year. And the nominees for this title or this award are Halo Infinite for its store that it was selling $15 bundles at launch. Overwatch 2, or should I say Overwatch 1.8, for being really a not real sequel, but dropping skins that are 20 plus dollars a pop. You have Valorant for selling the color blue for nearly $40. You have Battlefield oh 2042 God. for selling half a game at full price and charge and then changing the changing it to be free to play after the first yeah. month to get people to come back to the game. And then we finalize it with Madden 23 for selling nearly or really a broken game at launch and making it pay to win with its ultimate team and patting themselves on the back for adding basic functions that barely will work half the time so i'm gonna give my pick for the winner of the scrooge award and i'm gonna say it's madden 23 for being a multi-billion dollar franchise and basically being unable to actually accomplish any of the goals that they have and it amazes me every year how people will buy $70, pay $70 for a Madden title that is completely trash every single year. And I haven't played a Madden game in, in years because of it. I actually got the free trial because I wanted to play it. But I was literally to myself like, I don't feel really feel like playing this game because it's just bad. So I, I Madden 23, like I, I, in, like I played it a little bit and I was like, I can't, I just can't stomach this and make a video on it because... It's just gross. So I'm I am saying Madden 23 wins the Scrooge Award. I think hands down. Um Haki, Scrooge Award. Who do you got winning? All right, so let me just start off by saying I personally, my opinion on all sports games are they're all trash. <laughs> I am not spending seventy dollars on that. I think that's a scam. But they have to make their money somehow. I get it. Um so yeah, I mean Madden, I would literally never spend a dime on Madden. Um, I'm also not the type of person that cares what I look like in game as if you ever play with me with Warzone or Overwatch, I'm just wearing whatever my character comes with. Sometimes I'll change it up. I'm not going to buy any money. I'm not going to buy anything with my own hard earned money that is just going to make me look different. I care about the play, how I'm playing, how my team's playing. So I'm. I can't fathom spending $10 on a skin in Overwatch 2. I thought that was disgusting to see that. Um, but I think Battlefield is going to take the cake. That was the worst possible thing of watching myself uh, at work press the buy button and buy the pregame, you know, buy the pregame and then go into that game and then a month later it's free to play. And how much you spent on it again? I spent like 80 bucks on it, like the mid tier. I didn't spend over a hundred. Mars man, how much you spent on that? I spent a hundred dollars in Battlefield, so that's <laughs> so that's, bad. that's kinda that was so painful. Battlefield, Battlefield is what I'm gonna take. Uh, oh man, this yeah. is this <laughs> is ahead. a really good list. Like it's a really strong Scrooge list. Um but to me, I think again that that winners can go either way, but I'm actually gonna go um with Overwatch and I'm going to go with the Scrooge part of Overwatch because they created half a sequel in a six year time span. And what they pretty much added is the store concept of buying skins and the battle pass. Um, And also don't forget 
us fools in this in this room has paid forty dollars to play a beta. Um, so we paid forty dollars for a beta that ended up being half a sequel. Um, and we were hoping that you know what the beta was just you know we were we were going to get a big content done when the game actually came out, but the content didn't change much from the beta no. to the actual game. And so we burned forty dollars, and now we get a battle pass, which they've even come out, and there's been a lot of talk about the battle pass being very substandard. And even they've acknowledged that they are going to have to produce better battle battle passes. So it's been acknowledged by their own company that the battle pass is very mediocre. And so to me, they deserve after six years of developing this, the Scrooge Award. Yeah, and uh, the final award I want to award for this year is the Sleeping at the Wheel Award, and that's given to the devs that barely completed a game or not really having any real plan post-launch. And the nominees for this are 3 for 3 Industries for Halo Infinite, EA with Battlefield, Blizzard with Overwatch 2, and Nintendo with Mario Strikers and Mario Party All-Stars. And I think the clear-cut winner for me, and this is from a fan of the series for such a long time, is 3 for 3 Industries. You know what's bad? when uh, not only do you launch with only what four game modes uh with barely with 10 maps total you the the xbox executive has to go on to a podcast and people ask him well hey what happened with halo infinite and his answer was literally well they didn't really have a plan post-launch and uh and we kind of tripped over the finish line and now we're just trying to we have a new leadership new people to lead the charge and now we're going to get the content there and make everything sure everything's good. That is disgusting. Like that is, that is gross for, and I'm a big, I'm, I play Halo Infinite all the time. If you've been a fan of the channel, you've seen me live stream Halo often. And I am a fan of the game when it comes to the gameplay and the art style and the narrative and all this stuff. But the content up until just recently has been horrible and it makes perfect sense. It was kind of like the, Oh, I could have told you that when they when they said there's no plan. I was like, I kind of knew that that was the case, but it only confirmed it when an Xbox executive has to come out and say, yes, they had no plan. And now we have a plan because up until this point, a year later, they finally admit that there is no plan. And uh, and so I think they are the they've been sleeping at the wheel for a while now. And I think they maybe finally have woken up from their slumber to to make sure they drive out of the way of traffic. So, uh, Langella Kill, who do you think wins the Sleeping at the Wheel Award? I agree with you on the top. I think they're top two, but I think they're right behind EA, who might have ruined the, um, the 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 great series of Battlefield. And uh, and to me, it, it's one of the, like the most almost criminal type stuff that went down for for that game to come out the way it did. And for how long it has taken to fix the game, if you can even count it as being fixed. I mean, no one cares at this point. Um, I do think 343, for, for executives to come out and say, you know, that they had no plan and, and it took a year for, for the content dump to, is, is really damning. And usually in a year, that would actually be the, the number one. I mean, they would be the clear cut enemy of, you know, of everybody. But I can't put them in front of, of, what they did to Battlefield. And it's it's one of the worst, you know, like what CD Projekt Red did with Cyberpunk, right, um, has been like historic on, on releases. But I actually have faith that CD Projekt Red, even though I do think it's different from, from the great years that they've had, has an opportunity to redeem itself. And they've done some of it with uh, Cyberpunk. And now they're coming out with the Witcher games, right? I don't trust EA can save Battlefield, right? Like that's how scary that launch is and the content and the fixing up to this point. It's just been all about money. Um, and, and so to me, they are number one. Haki, who do you think is going to win this? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of piggybacking off of Angela. I think Battlefield is going to win this. Um, and ever since Cyberpunk came out, a lot of games have been dropping uh, either, you know, half-assed or with lack of content um but those games overwatch call of duty a lot of content but mediocre um those games aren't dead halo not dead you know 
but Battlefield, I mean, I think they murdered it like <laughs> right <laughs> they, off the. They smothered that thing right off the yeah. launch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's like and like them not having a story mode and 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 us finding that out was like yeah. detrimental. Yeah. Like they were one of the best shooter games ever. Other than that Battlefield Cops and Robbers game, almost all Battlefields have been pretty pretty good. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so, pretty much. They murdered this right off the rip and like Angelo Kill said, I, I mean, it's dead to me. I'm pretty sure it's dead to you guys. I don't know if they'll ever bring this game back. And I don't even know what the deal would be for the next game. If I can trust them, I, I'm sure as hell not spending ninety dollars <laughs> on whatever Battlefield comes oh, out with in a week and a half. Uh, I will not be spending any money on Battlefield ever again. And yeah, what like we've seen these other companies, right? Like try to save their brand, right? Yeah. We've seen Cyberpunk try to save it. We've seen Destiny save it. We've seen Halo. I mean, it took a long ass time. But like and but then, finally putting in content, right? Yeah. What, what do we do? Like, it's a dead corpse. It's yep. a dead corpse that they're dressing up at times. But like, there's no desire to go back. None. And this was a great franchise that competed with Call of Duty, yep. and it could have taken over as the number one FPS shooter. Yeah, because you know what though? What's crazy is I picked Halo Infinite because of the the I guess the opportunity they had. The year it dropped, right? I never thought that Battlefield 2042 would would crash as badly as it did. I honestly was excited because I was like, "Wow, you're gonna get Battlefield 20 2042." I mean, Call of Duty Vanguard. I kind of had a feeling it was gonna be good anyway, but Halo Infinite was gonna drop too in the same season, and I was like, "Dude, this is gonna be amazing!" And Battlefield 2042 crashed and burned, and I was like, "Okay, Halo Infinite just needs to be a solid." Just a solid FPS game at launch, and it's going to take the cake for best multiplayer. And they, they dropped the ball on the amount of content, and that was the problem. Yeah. Is just they they dropped so bad on that on that content drop that we had for like that first season, and that was six months. And and, and remember, big team battle was unplayable for a month straight. Like you know, yeah. like and that was like that was what hurt me. And now, Grant, I agree with both of you. I think. Battlefield 2042 is in a worse state than Halo Infinite. Like, it's like un unredeemable in what it is. I just think that it's almost like I didn't even consider it to be sleeping at the wheel. I just think it might have just died at the wheel, to be honest with you. Like, I think that would be my difference in how I would pick Battlefield over Halo because I'm like, Battlefield literally, they died on arrival. It's like they literally got into the car and the car exploded. It didn't even have a chance to drive off the lane. Like, Halo at least, did. everyone likes the game of the game combat and the story. It's just there's no content to play. At least yeah. for that first year, you know what I mean. Like and now, with now Bonnie there's Ross leaving, and there's yeah, a now there's like answers. People... There's answers yeah. to what is going on, and even and Microsoft said, "Yeah, you know what? We we made changes for a reason, and now we're fixing this problem, right?" And I think that's something that's important. Like EA, like they they recently just added a scoreboard. You know what I mean? And like that that's their that's their big announcement that they have. And I'm like, D dude, you, you, you just stop. Just make a new one. Just make a new one at this point. But First off, the official date of the uh, of the awards is going to be December 9th, and you all know we're going to be discussing the details and the final results when they are dropped. But I want to ask, which game do you think will win Game of the Year? And make sure you put that in the comments below, and and tell us what other awards you think are going to be, be won by different games, and which one do you think will be, be winning the Scrooge Award as well as the Sleeping Behind the Wheel Award. But I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, if you like this type of content, please make sure you hit a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Check out our Twitch where we do our live streams. We just hit that affiliate and we're going to be growing day by day. So come check out our, you know, our live stream. We play often together on a lot of popular titles um, all across the board. You can join us on social media on Discord and Twitter. It has located in the description below, as well as you can support the channel by becoming a Patreon to support this channel grow day by day. But until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.